while we're waiting, turn to the person next to you and say, glad you're here. Go ahead, do it. Go ahead. If it's a guest, tell them you're glad that they're here especially. And you see, some things never change. Electronics will cause you great heartache. They'll come up, y'all do something like, there it is, when it comes up, we'll move forward. We change physically while on earth. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 52, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and the Bible says, we will be changed. One of these days, physically, our change is going to stop. You know when that change is going to stop? When one of two things happen. You die, or the rapture occurs. But the good thing on the other side of that is, 1 Corinthians 15, 53 through 55 says this, for this corruptible, this body that is constantly changing, this body that is not looking like what it used to look like years ago, must put on incorruption. In other words, we'll get a new body. We'll get a new body. Anytime I have an opportunity to help a family through a difficult time at a funeral, I tell them this. The next time you see them, now I can only say this to those that I can with confidence know that that person that we're doing that funeral for has a personal relationship with Jesus Christ as their Savior. You know the most difficult thing for me to do as a pastor, the most difficult thing for me to do when I get called by the funeral home and say, hey, can you help this family out by conducting this funeral? The most difficult job for me isn't to rearrange my schedule, isn't to spend the time meeting with the family and getting things personalized so the service can be as personal as possible for that person. The most difficult thing isn't whatever adjustments I got to make. The most difficult thing for me is not to be able to give that family the assurance that they're going to see their loved one again because that person never made it abundantly clear during their life that there was a time where they asked Christ to forgive them of their sins and give them the gift of eternal life so that they could leave with that family the greatest gift of love they could ever leave with them and that is the assurance that I'll see you again someday. That is the most difficult position that a pastor or a person, a preacher or a chaplain ever gets put in is that I can't give that family that assurance that this old body that's going in the grave is going to come out in a perfect status because God promised to those that know Christ as their Savior that body will be resurrected incorruptible and be changed in the twinkling of an eye to a perfect body. And I would just say this to you that are here today, that if you have not made it abundantly clear to your family that there's a time in your life where you accepted Christ as your Savior, and you have reached that age of accountability, that you would show how much you loved your family, not by buying them stuff, not by spending time with them, not by anything else other than saying, I want you to know that I am saved. And if I should die today, you'll see me again in heaven. That's the best gift you can give to somebody. Because then when I read the scripture of 1 Corinthians 15, 53 through 55, that says, for this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? You know, one of the changes that we're going to go through as a child of God is that physically we are going to change. And that is made abundantly clear in all that you've got to do is get an old photograph from 30 years ago and take a picture today and the evidence is undeniable that you're changing physically. But you know the good thing? That as a child of God, one of these days we're going to go through a permanent physical change. And we're going to go, and, that, and we may have to go through the valley of the shadow of death to get it, but the good thing is the psalmist said we don't have anything to fear. 
because what's waiting on the other side is far better than what we're leaving on this side. And on this side, we're going to leave the old wrinkled body, the body that isn't lean, mean machine like it used to be. And we're going to get a perfect body. And that'll be a physical change that'll be worth going through because when we get that perfect body, we're not going to have to worry about the second death. Now, people say sometimes, well, preacher, what's the perfect body look like? I can't tell you, but it's got the word perfect in front of it, so that makes it okay. Will I look like I'm 20? Will I look like I'm 30? If I live to be 100, is that the way I'm going to be stuck all of my life? I don't know, but I know this. Where we're going to get that perfect body, it's going to be heaven. And all of our bodies are going to look heavenly. And we will be known as we were known, the Bible says. And while it may be that the appearance may tweak and the change may take place, people will look at you and they're going to say, well, there's old Jerry over there. There's old Don over there fishing. There's Jerry tipping the scales over there fishing with Don. There's Ernie. He's out on the tractor. And there's a bunch of kids playing in the dirt. Physical change. Does anybody recognize anybody in that picture? Stand up if you see yourself in that picture. Stand up. Anybody? All right, go to the next one. That's at the groundbreaker. Anybody know who that is? Who is that, Myra? Brianna. Where are you, Brianna? She's in the nursery. We'll get her out here. That's Brianna. The baby's holding a baby. Let's see another one. It'd be just like Brianna to get it stuck on her. You got another one? All right, when it comes up, come back. Second point, people go through spiritual change. And when I hear y'all get excited, I'll know it ain't over the sermon. It's going to be over the fact the next picture came up. People go through physical change, but people also go through spiritual change. People go through spiritual change. When we get saved, there's a change that should occur. There's a change that should occur when we get saved. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 4, 22 through 24, that she put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is the corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. When you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, not only do you have the hope that there's going to be a physical change, that you're going to get a new body in heaven, and listen, let me say this too, that while this physical body is changing here on earth, you can do it with grace and dignity and with joy because you know that every day you change and every year that goes by and every wrinkle you put on and every pound you either put on or take off, it's all driving toward getting a perfect body that's going to replace this body. So grow old with grace is what I'm saying. Grow old with dignity and grow old with pride knowing that God has left you long enough here on earth that you have had the ability to grow old. I have done services for children. And I guarantee you, all those parents would have rather seen their kids grow old than them to have got, died at the age that they have died. But spiritually, we go through changes too. Hold that thought right there. Spiritually, we go through changes. When we get saved and accept Jesus Christ as our Savior, there should be a spiritual change. There should be a new man. There should be a new woman. We shouldn't be known by our old ways, but we should be known by new ways. And that requires a spiritual change that you cannot do without a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Now the problem is that sometimes people get saved, they've had that initial spiritual change, and then they do, like the Bible says, they just start to drift backwards. And maybe that's where you are today. Maybe you've drifted backwards into those old ways. God expects you to live 
like a new person that is inhabited and dwelt by a Holy Spirit who can help you achieve the new way of living if you'll just follow the Holy Spirit's leadership. Third thing, people go through mental changes. And we ought to as a child of God. It is with the mind that we process change that needs to be made. It may take place in the heart, but it is developed, processed, and implemented through the mind. Therefore, to make changes that honor and glorify God, we've got to do certain things. Philippians 2 and 5 says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. No longer are you thinking as a new person, spiritually changed with an old mindset, but now you want to take the mind that was in Christ and begin to think and to process and to implement changes in your life with a new mindset that is controlled and dominated by the Lord. The Bible says in James 1, 7 through 8, that man should not think he will receive anything from the Lord if he is a double-minded man, unstable in all he does. You know the most miserable person on the face of the earth? A person who can't make up their mind. You know what creates more conflict and confusion? Somebody that can't make up their mind. You don't believe me? You go through the drive through and ask your wife, what do you want to eat or what do you want off the menu? Or your husband. Or your husband. Or your kids. That's where most conflict occurs when people are trying to make up their mind about what they're supposed to do. As a child of God, that should be a no-brainer. We know what we're supposed to do, and if we don't know what we're supposed to do, there's this thing called the Bible that if we study it, will show us what we're supposed to do. And here's the thing about it. You know who the most confident person is? You know who a confident person is? A confident person is a person that has made up their mind about what they're going to do, implements a plan through solid mental thinking, and has a heart and a passion to drive toward getting it done, that is a person who is confident because they have made up their mind. And when you and I as God's children make up our mind that we're going to do what this book says to do, guess what? You'll pursue it with confidence and you'll have a steadfastness because God will help you along the way. Double-minded person, double-minded person, they're like that squirrel that can't make up which side of the road it wants to get run over on. Don't be that person. Don't be that squirrel. People go through life changes. If life changes are going to occur, let it happen in the pursuit of, ri- of a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of, of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's what 2 Peter chapter 1, 3-11 through 11 says. In fact, turn over there with me, if you would, to 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3-11. through 11. You want to know what your goal, what your purpose for making changes in your life ought to be? And I'll be honest with you, I've read scripture, the scripture over and over before, but it's like so many other times you read a scripture and it doesn't really just jump off the page and then one day it does. And for this message it did. I want you to focus on 1 Peter chapter 1 and verse 11, and then we're going to go back up to the top. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 11. And you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's what I want to have. When I get to heaven, I want to have a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Does that mean that there's going to be three wheelbarrows full of gold waiting for me when I walk through the pearly gates? No, that's not what it's talking about. That means Jesus is going to be happy to see me. That means those that have gone on before me are going to be glad to see me. That means I'm going to be able to walk into the presence of heaven with my head up and not hanging it low because I didn't make the changes I needed to make in this life that showed how much I loved my Lord and Savior and serve Him here on earth. I want, to, I want to have that kind of welcome, and I don't know if this is the way it is. This is probably a little bit of Hollywood, but work with me. 
I want to have that kind of welcome that when Jesus is on his throne and millions of people are around him and whatever entrance portal we come into heaven, he says, there's Tim Hammer, y'all. Let's give him a round of applause. Now, it ain't going to work that way because when I see Jesus, the only person I'm going to be applauding is him. And I'm going to fall on my face in the presence of a righteous and holy son of God who is wearing a blood-stained robe that purchased my sins forgiven. I don't want to walk into heaven, listen, you don't get anything out of this, get this. I don't want to walk into heaven and the last thing that I leave on the other side of the gate as I go into heaven are regrets that I wish I would have changed some things I should have changed while I had the opportunity to change it here on earth. So when I get to heaven, Jesus doesn't have to say, why didn't you change and do what I asked you to do? That ain't the last thought. You know, it's kind of funny, and I don't know if y'all have ever been in you know, an accident before. I know Mitch had a had an unexpected accident the other day. We're, thank God he didn't get hurt. Uh, I'm just glad he didn't get hurt for the accident that he experienced. But you know, it's kind of funny when something happens suddenly where it's an accident and, and your life could have been taken from you. It's really funny how much stuff flies through your brain in that split second like that, isn't it? You know? Man, I wish I would have said this, or I, I wish I would have taken care of that, or man, I wish I would have turned just so much. Uh, if you ever had that experience, you know what I'm talking about, where something that, that potentially could have taken your life, and it's like you get brain overload all of a sudden of all these things that rush through your mind in just that split second, and then it's over, and it's like, okay, I'm going to go back to what was happening before. I don't want that last split second. If God even gives me the opportunity to have a last split second thought. I don't want the last split second thought to be, man, I wish I would have changed something physically about me. I wish I would have changed something spiritually about me. I wish I would have thought about things differently with my mind. I wish I would have prepared to make the transition to go from this life to eternal life and know that the reception I was going to get in heaven was going to be a rich reception. One where God would be glad and be able to say, well done, thou faithful servant. Life is a lot of changes. Changes faster than we realize. How many of you, how many of you are already at that stage in life where you look back and you say, man, they sure grew up fast. Or man, I got here quick. Take a look at some of the pictures. Hopefully this time the devil's out of it. We're working in it. There's a couple. There's the old sanctuary that we meet in on Sunday night. We have a baptism in. and That's after the changes that have occurred. And What's the next one you got there, Logan? Bunch of folks in it. Eventually, you know, we outgrew that. We had to change. We came out here, I think it was April of 2017. Fortunately, we're large enough. We haven't been able to go back except for on Sunday night. What's the next one? There's one. Anybody old enough to remember that? Anybody old enough? Anybody here that worshiped in that, Miss Shirley? Did y'all? 1924. That's what it used to look like. Look at the changes that occurred and where we are now. Served as a school for a few terms. Very good. You know, back then, churches and schools were one and the same. Think about that, okay? What's the next one there? There's Danny up in the tree. That's uh, Moore, Oklahoma. Went out to Moore, Oklahoma. That was Danny. I'm sure that didn't meet OSHA guidelines, but oh well. But Who's that? Would that man stand up for a minute? Where are you? Where are you? Don? Don Bryant. What a stud, man. What a stud. Did you get thrown out of that game, Don? All right. We got another one, Logan. Uh, there's, a, there's a family. Look how they've grown up. You know, these little girls aren't little girls anymore. They've changed. There's a group. Who all's in that group? The McDades. Who else? 
Gracie on the left. She's not that little anymore, is she? Changing. What's the next one we got? I remember that. Do you all remember that? Yeah, that was, a, that, was a, that was a good moment for us. Back, I think, after 2-11, and we wanted to get the flag out, and that came, uh, I think that came off of Everett's pole, and they let us borrow it that night. That was uh, when we set up to do the law enforcement. We weren't ready to move in, but we did it for that service. That was, uh, I think we were honoring law enforcement and military that day, getting prepped for it. What we do best around here that we're about to do in a minute. Some things never change, that's a good thing, okay? The groundbreaking for the Family Life Center in the back is Miss Shirley and there's Miss Irene to the right, Miss Virginia. Some of the kids have grown up, now get to play in the building. Positive change. There's some more, you see, uh, there's Shannon, there's uh, Brother Wilson to the left. I think that's David Steele back to the right. Lamar, Miss Shannon. There is um, Jim Simpson. You know, sometimes change is hard because you lose loved ones that you know are waiting for you in heaven, but you sure are glad they made investment while they're here. Just the thought, what are you leaving while you're here? to help others that are waiting for you there. Up there, I mean. uh, that, yeah, that is the same shirt today that you were wearing back then. Some things don't change. There's, uh, help me out in the middle right there. Is that that's Sandy, is that you Sandy? In the middle, Sandy. All right, next one. There's some more. There's some 30-pound heavier guy on the right-hand side and some 20-pound lighter guy on the left-hand side. And now if you, look out, if you look out the back, there's a family life center. That tree's not there anymore, and it's a pretty pasture. We didn't own that back then, but we own it now. God's blessed us. Amen. Sanctuary, I think that's before the remodel, if I'm not mistaken. Anybody recognize anybody in there? Okay. Jamie? All right, next one. There's Edith and Bill. There's Miss Vivian. She's probably still smiling in heaven today, I bet. And who's that? Miss Shirley, would you stand up for a minute? Brother P can't be here today. His body just won't let him sit very long, but he had to leave. There's our Miss Shirley and Brother P. <laughs> Still got that pretty smile, too. The rig. There you go. I don't think we have Jim and the tutu in this lineup, do we? Okay, Jim, Jim was a bold character. We spared you the picture of him and the tutu in the back. There's Danny again. That was blessed before. Adriel, Valesta, Vivian. He used to hang on the net in the days gone by, but there's the church again. All right, now, who's some of these folks? Myra? All right, Randy, where are you? Stand up, buddy. That's Randy now. That's Randy then. <laughs> Change for the better. <laughs> All right, what's the next one? There's, yeah. 
H.T. and Jeannie. For those of you all that don't know, they're visiting day. H.T. and Jeannie are both in heaven. Uh, left a big hole in our heart. Change is hard, uh, but they also left an inspiration for us to live up to. And I do see others stepping up and filling the gap that's created down here. Amen. Uh, Ernie and Tina and their big baby boy. Well, not really, but Jared. There's Pete, and who's the other couple? Okay. All right, what's your next one there, Lily? Is that Johnny? Johnny here today? All right, y'all see him. You remember when, okay? There you go. That's in the days. There's our fearless music leader there on the left with a whole bunch of kids, all smiling. Again. Yeah, we know him. Move on. <laughs> on the phone. Yeah, he was on the phone. That was our law enforcement. If I remember right, that was our law enforcement service. Saw the picture of a while ago. You know, what God gives us, we need to be able to use to help in the community and support our community. I believe that's up in Moore, Oklahoma with a group that went up there to clean up after the tornado. That's what we're about to do in a minute again. Everybody know who that is? That's Randy and Deborah. There's Miss Emily. Holly and Miss Virginia, and Karen, that brother, uh, that brother Wilson, yep, the, our conductor, Bible school. That's it. So I wanted to put some pictures up before you and give you this in closing. Mm -hmm. Terry. And small things can make big changes. And so let me capitalize on that thought by saying this. Don't ever view yourself as too insignificant to make a big change. Jesus, with what started off as 12 and turned into 11, look what he did thousands of years later. If we ever think that we can't make a positive change, even though we may have to go through changes, We've lost the ability to have the vision that God gave to us. And we need to make change. We need to make it in a positive way. We need to make it in a biblical way. Let me tell you what happens when you don't change, and I'll use this. It's the frog in the kettle illustration. The guy started an illustration, or he was doing a scientific project. Took a pot of water, put water in it, dropped a frog in it. It was calm. Over a period of time, he turned the temperature up. The water just began to get warmer and warmer. You know what that frog did? That frog just stayed in there. When the water got to boiling, you know what happened to the frog? The frog died because it didn't adjust and make change. If we don't make change, and I'm talking about meaningful, positive, purposeful, spiritual change in our life. If God says, I want you to change this in your life, we're going to be just like that frog. And we may become complacent and comfortable in our environment and our surrounding. You know what will happen over a period of time? We won't be celebrating 150 years or 200 years. We don't need to change the message. The message is the same that with Jesus. And that is, in order to know Christ as your Savior, you've got to ask Him to come into your heart, forgive you of your sins, 
and give you the gift of eternal life. That message hasn't changed in over 2,000 years or since the beginning of time when God had Adam and Eve in the garden. The message hasn't changed. You need to get plugged in with the church that you can take your talents, your skills, your, your everything that God has given you and use it to make spiritual positive change in a world that is going the wrong way and going faster and faster in the wrong direction. The message hasn't changed. The message hasn't changed that God has equipped you to do something. Whatever it is that he's equipped you to do, use it for his honor and glory so that you can have a joyful entrance into heaven and not regret having to go. Do you want to go into heaven in a joyful way? Do you want to go into heaven in a purposeful, meaningful, glorifying God's way? That if there's something in your life you need to change, today would be a good first day to start. Because I promise you, as we've looked at these pictures today, I bet some of y'all thought that was just yesterday. <laughs> your time to go to heaven is coming quicker than what you might realize. If you're here today, you don't know Christ as your Savior, you want to make a change, you come, I'll talk to you. We'll go off the room and they can go to lunch and we'll finish up. You can get saved. If you're here today and this is where you want to camp out and you say, this is where I'm going to make my commitment to serve the Lord, come on, we'd love to have you. If you're here today as a child of God or maybe even a member of this church, God's been pressing you. You know, there's some things you need to change about your spiritual life. Change the way, about the way you're thinking with your mind. There's ways you need to change about what you're doing with that physical body I gave you. It's supposed to be a temple. Make a commitment today to change. And change the way God wants you to change. So when you go into heaven, it's a joyful experience, not a regrettable experience. And I'd say this in closing, the most important thing is you're here today and you don't know Christ as your Savior, you ain't going to see heaven. You're going to see hell. And when you get there, you wish you would have changed. Would you stand? Father, I pray that you just take this time where we set it aside to respond. And maybe something has been said that has maybe provoked somebody to think about a change they need to be making in their life. And it's for the better. It's toward what you want to see achieved and you want accomplished in their life. I pray that you give them the spiritual courage just to stand where they are and pray and talk to you and be honest with you. Be transparent. You already know what's going on anyway. You're just waiting for them to talk to you about it. So that there can be a, a point of reference in their life today where they can go and say, you know, that's the day I purposed. I made a decision to make a change to accept Christ as my Savior, to take my life that you've given me and do something meaningful and purposeful with it and make an emotional, mental effort to invoke that change and make a plan to make that change being driven by a spiritual change. Father, we look at the pictures on the screen and it seems like yesterday for some of those things, just evidence of how fast time can slip through our fingers. Help us to understand the value of time. That time is going to pass regardless of whether we want it to or not. And changes are going to occur. May they all be for your honor, for your glory. And may we experience it today in our lives individually through a decision to make a change today. Just ask all these things in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, the Savior. Amen. Brother Dennis, what number do you want to sing? It's 223, nothing but the boot. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the blood that makes me white as snow. I know 
Nothing but the blood of Jesus for my pardon. This I see. Nothing but the blood of Jesus for my cleansing. This my plea. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the get a real blessing today. We've known about this for about a week now, but now you get to know about it today. Uh, Blakely Hammer comes this morning, and she professes Christ as her Savior. Is that right, Blakely? Hmm? Last Sunday after church, um, Fran wasn't able to be doing children's church, so she sat in big church. And last Sunday, right after church, she came up and grabbed me by the leg. She said, Papa, I got saved. I said, well, when did you get saved? She said, while you were preaching, when you said, and she was listening, which you got to remember that about kids. They listen, you know. Sometimes they play it back to you. But she, she said, I got saved while you were preaching. And we visited with her this week, and we've counseled with her this week. And there ain't no talking this young girl out of her decision. And so, Blakely, anything you want to say, Blakely? Nope. Okay. First time. All right. So Blakely comes this morning having professed Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior, and she wants to get, as she says, baptized. And she wants to get baptized this morning and become part of our church family. So all who would receive her on her profession of faith, would you say amen? amen. How about a praise God in there somewhere? And give the Lord a hand. All right, y'all, uh, let's do this. How, um, if you can, Tammy, for a second. Take them to the back, and everybody can come by and shake their hands on the way to the dinner line. You know, I just want to say this in closing. Um, the Lord purposely designed it that it would only require a childlike faith to get saved. The longer you wait to get saved, the more complicated Satan makes it, and the more of the world's rationale and reasoning he will introduce into the thought process. Jesus said it only takes a childlike faith to trust Him. So if you're here today as an adult and you never accepted Christ as your Savior, quit listening to all that garbage Satan has pumped into your head and get it down to the basics. Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me my sin. Give me eternal life. And you will be saved. And then start making the changes we looked at this morning so you can enter heaven joyfully with no regrets and hear Jesus say, well done, thou good and faithful son. Amen? Amen. If you want to talk about that afterwards, you come on, you see me. Hey Blake, you know, come on up here buddy. In just a minute we're going to dismiss after this song. Uh, we'll ask the blessing on the food and if you did not know, we're having a um, fellowship celebrating our 135th anniversary. And if you didn't bring food, I promise you, I did a pass through a while ago, we've got plenty. So we want everybody to stay around, just enjoy a time of fellowship. And then this afternoon, uh, Grief Share will be going on at 2.30, choir at 4. 5 o'clock, we got Brother Robbie Horn coming in to preach to us tonight. So it would really encourage you just to uh, make it a point to be back at 5 o'clock in the Old Sanctuary. Uh, we had a great message last week from Brother Donnie Blackaby. Uh, tonight is going to be Brother Robbie Horn. Uh, we've had him here before. He will really challenge you. And then after that, handbells will meet and Better Man will meet. And uh, so we got a full activity list of activities this afternoon, all right? Blake got baptized last week. Wanted to give you your baptismal certificate. Blake Enter, he got baptized on the second day of October last week. And we wanted to give you your baptismal certificate, brother, and say we're proud of you, okay? Thank you. All right. We got some prayer requests for you. Uh, we've really taken it as a church family with some folks being sick in our church family. Uh, I want you to remember, if you would, 
uh, Bobby Birch as he continues to recover, doing better. Scott and Cindy, Scott's still in the ICU. We need to remember him in our prayers and Cindy and just hold him up in our prayers. Gary and Pam Fowler, Gary's recovering from his bypass surgery. Edith Ramsey had complete knee surgery this past week. Remember her, remember Bill and his back, it's really giving him fits. Janice Greer's continue to remember from recover from shoulder surgery. Rita has knee surgery coming up this month. Remember her in your prayers. Uh, Joanne McGade, she has gone back into AFib after her procedure. So remember her while they try to get the medicine balanced. Jackie Bryant uh, had a procedure this week with regards to a stent for his um, um, dialysis. But the good news is Janie got a great report from the doctor as far as uh, her kidney function. So that's great. Remember Irene, uh, she's just going through a tough time right now medically as well. Uh, and I think Tamara's got surgery coming up as well. So that's just a taste of what we're dealing with and why you need to remain faithful in prayer for all those. Are there any other prayer requests? LaDonna? Okay, Thomas Moore. Okay, let's remember this in our prayer request. Any others? Value also of being a church family. You got somebody staying behind you when you're going through tough times. So praise God for positive change. Unspoken? Okay. Nancy, I see you slipping up here. <laughs> Come on. anniversary that we're celebrating that we're very thankful and grateful to have you as our pastor okay. and so on behalf of the church a charge to you and behalf, on behalf of the lady thank you. Thank, you thank you thank you and brother dennis as our music minister <laughs> we appreciate everything they do passionate about church as well as um making our worship Thank you very much. Uh, Dennis and I counted a blessing to serve on staff here, and uh, we'll just keep loving the Lord and loving each other till He comes back. Amen? Right. Yeah. All right, great to see everybody here. I know we went a little long, but the food is still warm. Guests, we want you to stay, and uh, let's have a quick word of prayer on the food, and then Dennis will lead us out on song. Father, thank you for the day. Thank you for the food we're about to receive. We pray that all of our guests, all of our members, would feel welcome to stay, and that we might just enjoy a time of breaking bread and fellowship, kind of like what you did with the disciples. Now let us do with each other. We give you the praise and the glory. And we'll go out on a song to honor you, Lord. It's in your name we pray. And the things that we sing right now, we do for your glory. Brother Dennis. He lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me. Alone lies never away. He lives, he lives. Salvation to him part. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. Amen. Thank you for coming.